right, today we are doing some maintenance activities. One of those maintenance activities is going to be a simple oil change on the generator. We replaced the fuel filter not too long ago. Those are the main two things that you do quite regularly with the generator. This is a Cummins Onan RVQG 7000. And so this video is intended to be very basic uh, to teach somebody to how to do this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the cover. The first time you remove, if you haven't removed the cover before, it might be a little bit hard and seem like you're going to break something. But you can simply tug on this. Sometimes you have to tug pretty hard. And it's going to come right off. <clears throat> oh, the other thing that we also did on this uh, that you have to do periodically is the spark plugs. And they're kind of a pain. Uh, so the next time I do the spark plugs, I will also take a video of that because they're kind of difficult to get to. Uh, other than that, uh, it's not super hard. Uh, Alright, so for the oil change, you really don't need a, uh, a tool to take the filter off. Um, you can use a tool to take the filter off, but typically you can snug them tight by hand uh, with a pair of gloves or maybe a rag, and you can usually loosen them up. Now first, before we loosen up the oil filter, which is right underneath here, I'll show you a nice picture of it in a moment, um, you're going to want to drain it and there's a nice little one thing that I like about this unit which is actually on a Canyon Star 2017 Newmar Canyon Star 3921 but it doesn't really matter what RV unit you have if you have the same generator unit these have an actual uh, little toggle that you just toggle and uh, it will drain the oil it has a toggle and a little uh, spout that comes out and drains the oil so it makes it very easy uh, to change the oil. So we're going to go ahead and get a pan to drain this in and start draining that oil and then we'll take this filter out and uh, have the new filter. So I'll be right back with those parts. Before I do, I'm going to show you where the... Alright, first let's talk about what is absolutely needed for the oil change on the Onan 7000 generator. So you're going to need two quarts of oil. Uh, depending on the season it will vary on the recommended oil. It's springtime so we're going to use 10W30. And you can do two quarts of that. So don't really have a recommended brand. In fact uh, they only had one of each at the local store here so we got the Valvoline and Castrol. So I would recommend getting the same brand normally you also need a filter so you can get the Onan filter online you can actually order an oil change kit for this so there's the part number and the information of what you need for an oil filter it's one of the streamline you don't have to use the Onan um, you could definitely um, use Wix or one of the other brands as well so that's the only two things that you have to have some things that are good to have, a pair of gloves or a rag, um, definitely to tighten up and loosen up that oil filter, or you could have an oil filter wrench. So we're not going to use an oil filter wrench today, but you definitely can do that. Um, a funnel. So I usually get by with a funnel like this. The uh, spout is fairly easy to access here, but you can't really get a, a bottle turned fully up. Uh, you might be able to do it without a funnel if you want. And then if you find it hard to kind of get that in there, you can also use a little nice piece that attaches to the funnel at the bottom that uh, gives you a little bit more accuracy with the smaller nozzle here. You're going to use two quarts, almost all of two quarts, depending on how much drains out of the engine. Uh, another thing that's handy to have is some paper towels to do some cleanup. So we're going to go ahead and get under there. Um, actually, the other thing that you also must have or should have is an oil drain pan. I need to go get that drain pan here real quick. All right, we've just got a 10-quart, uh, which is fine. It's got a little place where you can set the filter there to drain. You want to take your uh, cap off so it can drain in there. And leave this open. That allows it to drain. You don't want to close this before you start carrying it. Um, you'll want to open that when you st start pouring it out so it pulls in some air from the outside as well. Um, so we're going to just crawl under here and show you where that little toggle is that drains. Okay, 
So you can see underneath here, this is the actual nozzle. The toggle was actually on top, I forgot. So it's really easy. We've got our nozzle there. We've got our little cog wheel there. We basically, you're just gonna take this and turn this. And as we turn it, oil's gonna start draining. Now, it'll drain better if you take the oil cap off. Give it some oil. There we go, it's starting to drain. And that oil looks pretty well used, so I think we might have went over a little bit over the recommended. It's every uh, every hundred hours, I believe, on this. It might be at every 50 hours. And it tells you the information of what you should use here for the oil filter. 10W30 is what it says here. If you look online, SAE30, it might say as well. Um, well, here, here it tells you based on the temperatures. So we're going to be in the 0 to 80 degree range for the most part. So we'll do 10W30. Um, is it going to be hotter in the summertime when we get there? We might step that up to 15W40. Um, also, you can use SAE30 if you're going to be above freezing. So we're going to let that drain. We'll go ahead and get the filter out as well, which will help drain as well. Set that filter right there in that drain filter spot. So I just had it hand tight, not very tight at all, but it wasn't leaking. One time we took it in for uh, actual paid professional maintenance, and the first time we ran the generator, it leaked out all the oil because they did not get it tight enough. So you can hand tighten, but all I can say is make sure you get it tight enough. You're going to want to check it the first time you turn it on. And hand tightening with gloves or a rag, best practice above just bare hands, especially when your hands get slickery from the actual oil that you're going to get on. So as you pull that out, the filter is going to be full, so you don't want to just tip it it also is coming through a, uh, a rubber gasket there on the bottom, so it's a little hard to get out. You just turn that over right here and let it drain out before you throw it away. We're going to let that drain, and then after it gets all drained, we will close that plug back off, put that filter on, and fill it with oil. Another thing to do before you put the filter on is to grease the gasket put a little bit of oil around the gasket there that help gives it a tight seal and keeps that da gasket from drying out and you basically just put that back in where you took the other one out Now after it fully drains, we will add oil. Okay, our oil has leaked out. We're all done there, so we're going to close this up. You don't have to go super tight on that. We've got our uh, filter in, making sure it's tight. Go hand tight again. Very good idea to have those paper towels. And now we are ready with our funnel right there. And two quarts of oil. We'll start with one, let one fill in fully. Depending on the funnel that you use. You just want to monitor your pour, make sure you're not pouring too fast and it's going to come out of the back of the funnel since we've got the funnel at a bit of an angle here. Two quarts of the same brand, so as I said, I recommend using the same brand. Again, we're using 10W30, it's springtime right now, we're good up to 80 plus Fahrenheit. Summertime we might want to switch to uh, either SAE30 or 15W40. And in the winter time, you're going to want to use 5W30. A 
Whoa, there we go. I wasn't paying attention. You can come right over the back of your funnel if you pour too quickly. Chris is sanding on her uh, porch swing. We got her in an auction a couple weeks ago. I'll show you that here in a bit as well. Lots of projects going on around the, uh, the homestead here. Until we get the homestead uh, fully remodeled, we're living out of this uh, Canyon Star, Newmar Canyon Star, and we also use it to travel around and go on motorcycle rides, visit family. Okay, it looks like we're full. We got some engine cleaner, engine degreaser that I usually put on afterwards. Didn't quite take the full two quarts, but we need to run the engine, run the generator here to uh, get that oil moving around in there and then recheck it. So now you can prime from right back out here and start your generator. run through there we've got no leakage at the bottom um, another thing while we're using this generator uh, you'll notice that you've also got two 30 amp switches this is a 50 amp generator we've got two 30 amp switches out here if you overdrive either one of those you will flip one of those breakers and part of your electrical outlets and utilities and appliances inside may stop working so if you're perplexed at why some of your stuff isn't working while you're running generator, uh, come out and check your switches because one of these might have tripped. You simply turn it off, turn it back on, and you'll be in business. So now we're going to uh, basically check our oil level now that we've ran it just to make sure it's good. Let's clean this off here real quick. Let's see where our level is. I can see that it's full just by looking at it there. So we don't need to add any in it, even though we ran through water through, we've got a full system of oil. So we are complete with our oil maintenance on here. We'll come back and spray some uh, foam engine cleaner on there, clean that up with some towels, and we are good to go. Then we'll put that panel right on. Basically, you just put it on very similar to the way you took it off. You line your little studs up with that hole and then just pop it in there and you are good to go. And again, you can start it and test it from out here, but you also have a start from the inside that you can run your generator from. So we should be good on our generator for another 50 to 100 hours. Let's see if it tells us up here. Um, oil change, actually it says change 150 hours or annually. So the service information here is a little bit longer than what I had uh, quoted on here. I had forgotten from the last time, I think. And your actual hour meter is here as well so you can see your hours right up here it's not on until we start the engine when you start the generator up So it's good to uh, make a note of your hours so you will know it says here, though also annually, whichever comes first. But we used to run our generator a lot. <coughs> Obviously, if you're boondocking and it's hot or winter time, 150 hours is only going to give you about a week of running time. So we're finished here, but make sure again that you note either on a notepad or keep it on your phone, something like that, of what your maintenance, next maintenance is in the hours there. All right, on to the next project. What are we doing next, Mark? I don't know. I didn't know you were doing this. <laughs> <laughs>